Hi, and welcome to a new cinematic composing tutorial. Today I'm gonna show you some functionalities in Logic Pro that are gonna blow your mind. Probably you will end up saying, how come I didn't know that before? So as a composer, it is important to know our tools, the way we work. In this case, with the DAW, knowing all the functionalities will help us to work easier, faster, and better. Today I want to show you some advanced functionalities that are a little bit hidden in Logic Pro, which is my DAO preference. So let's see it in the computer. So the first two tricks that I want to show you, these functionalities, are related to folders. We know that Logic Pro is not as good as others uh, with folders, but there are uh, ways to use the folders and track stacks in a way that will help us better than any other DIW. All right, so let's say that you will create here several instruments, you will load one contact here, and then you want to make a track stack. You create a track stack, summon stack, create. For example, I say these are my strings. And uh, I'm gonna load here just some Logic Pro easy thing. Quick, right? Here, go with violins, violins too, violas, cellos, and basses. That's all we need for the moment. So let's take this away from the track stack. And let's say that we want to, like, not to save our template with this all the time so that it has to load all these instruments every time. But what we can do is just like selecting this, we can go here and click on save and save it as my strings. Okay, and they are located now in user patches my strings. So once we have saved it as a patch, every project we can go to patches and click on my strings and boom, it loads. And it have it everything exactly the way that I configure it. So that it's super useful for modular templates. For example, when you create a track stack, one of the things that happen is that all the instruments here, they got rooted to bus 35, which is in this case, this track stack. But you can also delete the input of the track stack and set to the stereo out, for example. Still, you can save these, let's say again, my strings, I'm gonna replace it, I'm gonna delete it now, and when I load it again from here, you will see that they are routed to stereo out, and this is just like working as a folder. Okay, so the next tip, now that we have introduced folders, it's about folders. <laughs> so, you know that in Logic, it is very hard, not saying impossible, to folder one folder in, inside another. So, for example, I'm going to use this and create a track stack, and I'm gonna say that I, I want a folder stack, and these two, I want it a folder to a track stack, and a folder to. So, let's see what happens. For example, in this folder one, folder two. So if I try to put this folder to inside the folder one, see what happens. It doesn't let me do it. It doesn't want to make a sub level inside this folder. It just lets you to make a level. And if you try to put it inside a track stack, like a sum in stack, it doesn't let you either. But what happens if I do with a track stack, I try to put it inside a folder. That works. So I can put a sum in stack inside a folder. So that's important because that's actually the trick to put more folders inside. Let me show you now. So now if we want to put this folder two inside the folder one, which doesn't let us, when we put the sum in stack inside the folder one, then automatically it lets us also to place the folder two. And if you do this repeatedly, it's gonna be folder three. Okay, so let me start over. So I would put my strings in folder two, now folder three inside folder two. There, now again, this summing stack, I take it out, I put inside the folder one, and the folder two automatically now fits in folder one. As you see, now I have made like three levels with the folders. I don't know if this is a bug of logic, because you cannot do it manually, but you can do it through this trick. 
but maybe for some of you who like to organize a lot into folders, maybe it can be useful. Let's go now to the third trick. It's uh, something that will help us to navigate around the project. It is about to show tracks only that have information on them. Okay, this is a functionality that Cubase has and it's very easy to find, but no one talks about this in logic, but this function, you can have it. Okay, let me show you how it works. So for example, I'm gonna open all my folders, you see? But what if I, I'm not interested in, in all the empties? So I would click a command and it only shows now those that have information on them. This functionality is not very obvious where it is, but you can find it if you go to Logic Pro, key commands, edit, and you go to show, you for example, filter for show tracks. And then you have to look for this functionality, high show all empty tracks. Okay, by default, it's unused, but it's super useful. And so in my case, I have just assigned it to a button that I have in my mouse, which sends this shortcut, but you can do it with any other shortcut. I think this is great because it, it really helps a lot of navigation. Like for example, if I'm not using any Piccolo or Boe or whatever here, then what? why do I need it? Like just, I prefer to work with the tracks that I know that there are information and it's gonna be much easier to navigate around the project. So you can show all the tracks or you can hide the ones that are unused. No one talks about this trick in logic and I think it's very, very useful. The fourth trick that I want to show you now is uh, about copying lanes of automation. So for example, during many time I have been copying the information from the modulation to volume or expression manually, but uh, there is a way that I discovered recently. Let's uh, take these violins long. So what you have to do is bring up the automation. There are some modulation here. And let's say that I want to copy this to the expression so that you only do it with one fader and then you can more or less copy the same line from the modulation to the expression. What you have to do is select the region, click here to change from track to region, and then select the CC that you want to copy, for example, modulation in this case. So you have the modulation here and then you click on alternate and you hold it and you click here again and now you select the expression and when you do this it will say do you want to convert or copy and convert okay if you convert it all the modulation data will go to the expression and if you copy and convert it will only just copy the same data from the modulation it will be copied to the expression copy and convert so now we have the expression exactly the same light that we have in modulation and you see we have the expression and then brings us to the to the fifth tip which is about controlling the CC the continuous controller in the piano roll. So for example, let's say that I have this uh, automation here from the expression, okay? And I want to work it. So one of the things that you have to do is that if you want to move it parallelly, you have to click in a patch chord and drag it up and down, just in a patch chord. Because if you bring it down from a space, it's gonna flatten. You know, and if you bring it up from above, then it's gonna have like more curve. So for example, if I want to exaggerate this a lot, I would bring it parallelly down and then I would bring it up like that. You see how it grows? Well, let's say that I, I want to work this manually. So I want to delete some of the points here and I want to see, and I want to control the bowing of the violins with my notes. So normally I would do this and you see, I want a big bow up until here and then a bow down until here. And you see, it's very imprecise. You cannot control it perfectly unless you go and here to snap, which is by default in smart, but down, it says snap automation. And you have to activate that. You can also set it to a command, which I, uh, I have set up to activate, deactivate. So now when I move this, it wants to move to the certain points so that I can work in a way that I can exactly do it until this point, one bar. For example, let's say that I want one bar up, one bar down with no mistake, okay? Or even a note, you see? If you set it up by smart, then it will snap smartly <laughs> to some points, which can be also notes. So once you have done this, you want to make some curve here. 
and how you do it okay you can do it in two ways so for example you click on t for tools and then you go to automation curve tool w you can do this but there's an easy way to do this and it's just like holding control and shift and you see the symbol it comes up and the only thing that they have to do is holding these two keys going and making my curve and even if I want to do more of them at the same time I can select them all hold control and shift and shape them all similarly so I hope that you have enjoyed these little tricks in Logic Pro. I think they are super useful and I call them that are advanced and hidden because really like they are not super famous uh, functionalities and I think that everyone should know that and I'm sure that you are gonna take advantage of these little tricks. So I hope that you have enjoyed the video. If you like, click on the button and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.